Back to our other big breaking news story this hour. We now know the verdict in the trial of Joaquin El Chapo Guzman in New York. Bryn Jingers is standing by live for us outside of the federal courthouse. Bryn. Yeah, we've got that verdict, John. It is guilty on all counts for the notorious El Chapo. That was 10 counts that jurors were considering after a two and a half month long trial. Uh, the most sort of uh, important count maybe is the first count, which was uh, running a uh, criminal enterprise. And of course, jurors found him guilty on that. That carried a life sentence. Now, it's important to note the judge in this is the one who's going to determine his sentence uh, in the final ending of this. Uh, but again, that's what that carried, a, a life sentence. Guilty on all counts is what we're hearing. Again, we're at a federal courthouse, so there's no transmissions coming uh, from the uh, courtroom. So we're waiting to get our reporters who've been covering this trial from day one out here to hear about his reaction, the government's reaction, his wife's reaction, who's been here uh, every single day of this trial. Uh, and we're certainly going to bring that to you. But that is that is the verdict. Guilty on all counts, 10 counts that jurors were considering for the past uh, six days here uh, in Brooklyn for El Chapo. John? Brendan Jingers, great hustle outside the courthouse. We'll come back to you as we get more details. Our legal analyst, Paul Callen, I believe, is also with us. Uh, Paul, the Treasury Department calls El Chapo the most powerful drug trafficker in the world. Uh, what do you take as the message from an overwhelming guilty plea here? Well, uh, this guilty finding, I think, is no surprise to anybody, although people were starting to get a little worried because the jury was out for so long. And the jurors were asking very, very interesting questions about um, some of the sub counts that they had to decide. But in the end, the trial portrayed somebody who was involved in perhaps thousands of killings uh, as the head of the Sinaloa cartel, a multi-billion dollar uh, drug cartel. And his methodology in smuggling drugs was really outstanding and un unbelievable to most people. For instance, he even used a submarine uh, to bring uh, some drugs into the United States. So he was a man of staggering power and, um, as the prosecutors described, consummate evil. And uh, so I think the, the verdict comes as no surprise to anybody. No surprise to anybody. Uh, obviously, um, it's a sad thing to say, and some people will find it a sick thing to say. Uh, but if you take somebody like this off the market, if you will, off the streets, uh, someone will try to take the place. Is this something that would send a message, uh, including the fact that after a lot of negotiations, the Mexican government did cooperate to help bring El Chapo here for trial? Well, I think it's a good sign that there was cooperation. And I think it was ultimately a recognition by the Mexican government that he was too big for them to handle. Remember, El Chapo had escaped on multiple occasions from Mexican prisons. Uh, John, there was fascinating testimony in the trial from one of the cooperators, uh, the cooperating witness with the prosecutors, saying that uh, there were huge bribes of government officials, including a hundred million dollar bribe of a former Mexican president. Now, that of course has been denied uh, by the Mexicans, but um, it was clear that the ability of the Mexicans to hold him and try him fairly was in doubt. So the fact that he's held by the United States, I think, will make a lot of people happy. And the other thing I want to mention is he'll get a life sentence here. Probably he may get consecutive sentences here, but he faces uh, at least, I think, 10 other uh, jurisdictions in the United States which have charges pending against him. And Bryn Jingers is still outside the courtroom. Uh, a compelling case from the government, including the fact that he was able to continue running the cartel uh, while he was in prison through bribes, that they controlled 40 to 60 percent of the Mexican drug trade, three billion dollars annually. Uh, El Chapo claimed in 2014 that he had killed 2,000 to 3,000 people. Uh, when you look at that, it seems like a shut case. Uh, what was the argument the defense made in this yeah. trial? How did they try to say not him? Yeah, you know, they didn't put up much of a defense. They actually were just using uh, the government's witnesses and sort of saying, look at this person. They're actually getting a deal because they are, uh, you know, in here for, in prison for other charges. Uh, so that was really their defense throughout this trial. They didn't really have much uh, of a defense. Um, so that's really one of the reasons um, that everyone, as Paul noted, was saying what's taking so long. Um, but again, this was a trial that had it was very dense. There was a lot of witnesses and there was a lot of drugs and video and audio. And uh, I do want to give you some color um, right now of our, our reporter in the courtroom, Sonia Mogi. Again, she's been covering this, uh, or a producer rather, she's been covering this from day one. And she says that when this all came down, El Chapo looked at his wife 
and he waved and they smiled at each other and she touched her hand to her chest. So that is the reaction from the man found guilty on all counts um, and could possibly be spending the rest of his life in prison, likely so. Again, the judge will make the final determination of that. Um, but that w his wife, uh, much younger wife, was somewhat of a fixture in this courtroom and so somewhat of, you know, everyone sort of paid attention to her because she was she's much younger. Um, she came in sometimes wearing the same clothes as El Chapo in solidarity, particularly on the day that his mistress was testifying for the government. Um, she brought in their twin daughters one day to support him. She's never left really his side, even though, let's remember, this is a man who has been kept in solitary confinement. Uh, he's put in a separate room uh, by himself while these jurors deliberated. Uh, so certainly that reaction uh, is interesting that they just smiled at each other and she touched her chest. Uh, certainly we're going to get a little bit more uh, information from Sonia when she's able to exit that courtroom. Certainly it takes a little while uh, for that to happen uh, while they wrap up uh, all these charges. John. And Bryn Steele, by we actually have Sonia, our producer, Sonia Mogdi, on the phone for us. So Sonia, uh, Bryn's describing it from the outside. Take us inside the courtroom at this big dramatic moment. Yes, you know, it, it, this is a, a moment that uh, people have been waiting for, involved with the trial, who've been watching the trial for months, it's been almost exactly, you know, three months to the day uh, since this trial began. And as that verdict was read down by uh, U.S. District Judge Brian Cogan, the room was quiet. Um, El Chapo, Joaquin Guzman, uh, and his wife, Emma Cornell, appeared emotionless. Um, in fact, just before the, the verdict was read, before the judge or jurors entered the room, a member of the defense team walked up to Emma and tried to hand her some Kleenex, and, sh and she said no. Um, and as soon as that verdict was read, um, you know, uh, Joaquin Guzman looked over to his wife, uh, and he smiled at her. He waved to her. She smiled back at him. She put her hand to her chest, uh, as Bryn was saying. Um, and when we asked her, you know, how are you feeling right now, she said, good, thank you. And, and that was it. And, um, you know, this has been... Uh, a very, very long journey for, for the defense team, for prosecutors. You know, these jurors also heard hundreds of hours of testimony and have been deliberating for, you know, 34 hours. Uh, so this is obviously going to take some time to sink in um, and, uh, you know, remains to be seen what, what is going to be next for the defense team. But from that first count alone, um, that criminal, uh, continuing criminal enterprise count, uh, Joaquin Guzman uh, will face uh, a mandatory life sentence, and his sentencing, uh, again, is expected to be in June. Sentencing in June. Sean Yamogi, appreciate the live reporting straight out of the courtroom there. Again, for those of you just joining us, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, 61 years old, the world's most notorious Mexican drug lord, according to the United States government, convicted on all 10 counts in a federal trial in New York.